Hello and welcome to the Good Boy Podcast, the monthly show where we talk about dogs that we grew up with or that we owned and how they helped us, made us laugh, uh, and made us smile, hopefully, too. I'm your host, Ilya Alexif, and today I'm joined with my dad. Hi, dad. Hi. So, uh, today we are talking about our dog, Chewy. So... Chewy was a dog who we had, I guess, or you get, our family had uh, when I was born, so she was older than me, um, so figured you'd be a good person to talk to. Um, I guess before we get into it, I think she died, what, like 2003 or something, something like that, she 2001? Lived, she lived a good life. She was about yeah. 15 years old. Okay, so... Um, so I guess just starting off, was Chewy uh, your first dog? Well, actually, uh, the first dog that we had in my house was was adopted by my mom. Oh, okay. And then my mom passed away, and we had this dog that was called Ami. But uh, Ami, unfortunately, had sniffed some... Um, some gr- wild grass and it worked into her lungs and uh although we tried to save her uh, we couldn't and uh so eventually we wound up up, up putting that dog down uh, as as a as a way of of helping her because she was just suffering and uh it was only a few days later uh, your mom, Ellen, said, "Hey, let's stop over at the uh, SPCA and just." Oh see yeah, yeah. Your... So that, that was gonna ask. It was like, did that did that make you want to get another dog? I mean, what, what do, well, do you remember? What kind of like what you well, were thinking? Well, I had already then? gotten used to a dog, and uh, I I was open to the idea, but I wasn't really hot on the idea. And so, I guess for context, um, my mom grew up with dogs her whole life. So yeah. Um, okay, so. And that's funny that because I guess before we get into Chewy, like that's what we did with Dewey, is like, hey, I want a dog. So that's it's funny that mom yeah. uh, did that. So um, so you went to the Humane Society. Went to to well, it's actually the San Francisco SPCA. Is it? Is it? And it was uh, located on uh, 16th Street at that time. And I said, well, we can look. You know, but, uh, you know, we're certainly not going to pick the first dog that you see. And uh, we just look to see what's there. And this is before um, Ian, who was on the Dewey episode, was born, right? So it was just you two. So. That's right. That We had so no it's children pe- pe- at that peace time. And, peace and quiet. We, we had a house with no kids at that time. Yeah. And we were living in San Francisco in a neighborhood that they call the Sunset District. And... Uh, well, we walked in, and of course, you know, the SPCA people are always willing to let you look at the dogs to adopt. So, as we walked in, there was this one dog jumping up, and, you know, I said, first of all, don't, we're not going to get the first dog you see. So, yeah, if we get a dog, we're not getting the yeah, first the, dog. Yeah, we're going to think about this, and we're going to analyze this. But of course, uh, there was this a uh, little black lab that was the first dog in the first cage, uh, jumping up and down, really excited, really happy, happy dog, and uh, that caught mom's attention. And then we walked through, and there was uh, other dogs, and you know they were all probably all barking and you know jumping up and down as as dogs do, but. Uh, the one that had caught mom's attention was the first dog that we had seen. So, chew, like, when you walk in, you see the dogs. There was a, a, a row of a row of of kennels. Uh, kennels, yeah. yeah. And so the the first one was Chewy. So I, I I don't I obviously I didn't go to that one, but we went to the San Francisco SPCA to get Dewey. It's not quite kennels; it's more of like rooms with windows, so you know you yeah, can walk I, around and see the dogs. So. Yeah, I think. But you, you know, know, this I, is what year would this be? I think Mom told me that uh, 
Chewie was two years older than Ian, so 1987? Yeah, probably. Okay, you know, so it, that's not a surprise. You know, they have, like, what, this chain link fence, right, in between? Probably. Like, this, the yeah. really narrow one, right? Yeah, probably. Okay. I don't, I don't remember exactly. Okay. It's been quite a long time. But, oh, yeah. Uh, but so Chewie was the first dog you saw, like in these rows That's of kennels. That's right, and he he was, he was jumping up and down. So, Mom asked if to see if we could sit with the dog for a while, and so uh, we went in, and that dog was jumping up and down and licking and uh, just very affectionate, and uh, the dog was uh, we're estimating about. 12 or 13 months old so okay she was just really still very young so i don't know how mom talked me into it but uh, somehow uh sometime later a half an hour or hour later uh i was sitting in the back seat of our car with this dog and this dog was what would i call a live wire she was just ju- <laughs> she I, You'd never seen such a happy, happy dog. Now, the reason why this outstanding dog was available was was kind of weird. Because somebody uh, had, had seen this dog kind of on the street on the East Bay and brought her over the, to the San Francisco SBA and dropped her off there. Weird. So... You know, maybe the original owners were trying to call the 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 humane societies over in the East Bay. Oh yeah, yeah. I but mean, they, but they never thought to call in San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, and this is the '80s, so there's probably not a lot of. I imagine there's probably not a ton of communication between the different. Yes. Yeah. Certainly. Pl- places, yeah. right? Because you know, how 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 is the dog going to get across the Golden Gate Bridge? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> or sorry, the Bay Bridge. The Bay Bridge. The Bay Bridge on the Golden right. Gate. <laughs> well, either one, yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, so somebody brought her over, and so nobody had claimed nobody had claimed her, but she truly was an outstanding dog. Now to describe her, she was kind of a, a black lab shepherd mix. Yeah, that's that's what mom told me. And uh, her fur was a. Uh, kind of like a shepherd length, but it was black and it was soft. It was, yeah, yeah, I remember that. And um, so immediately she felt at home in, in our house in the Sunset District. So did you, when when you're going through this, you you see the dog okay the dog's jumping up and down then you look at mom are you are you doing kind of that or what, what's kind of do you remember kind of like what your thought process were you just trying to I want to get out of here no uh, no I was you know I'm a yeah. I'm a good sport with well, your mom you was know? it a weekend right probably Saturday okay. yeah Saturday okay um so you you got home and like could you tell like that yeah she she, she thought she was like oh yeah, this she is knew, my place she knew this is gonna be a forever home. That's cool. And so um, we already had a dog door in the basement that would would lead out to the backyard. And we already had a cat. So now we had this black dog and a white cat. And they hit it off pretty well. Uh, and... As time went on, they were they were very good friends. You know, this cat, black cat. I mean, black white, dog and black, white cat. Yeah. So, um, so you got Chewy. You describe her as a life wire. How was? Would, 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 did she still expel that, all that energy? You know, when she got home. Yeah, like, sure. She was running around and yeah. just seeing it. It was very different from the dog that that um, my mother had. And it was a really pleasant uh, upgrade. And um, so she just fit in very easily. And uh, we... And you didn't have any kids yet. So, you know, you had time to yeah. take care of the dog. Tried, yeah. Um, so I guess before we start going as Chewy ages, um, are there any like... 
instant standout like puppy stories that you can think of? Well, not that I can remember, but there's some interesting things about this this particular dog. One, um, she was kind of independent, and uh, we could leave her food, and then go for a weekend and come back and she'd be okay she could she could manage out when we were not there so so we've had dogs that if we left overnight somewhere they would they would be just they would be distressed uh but uh chu was able to survive very well with you know if we were gone for a weekend somewhere and she she wouldn't eat the cat's food so we yeah, could I remember leave, that. We could leave here. food for the cat, and we could leave food for the dog, and they would both uh, survive uh, quite well. Yeah, in the previous episode, we talked about Mikey eating the cat food that was in the your your bed your uh, bathroom, and then Dewey jumping on the piano in the cat food. So, uh, yeah, so this was you know a good dog, play understood, you know. Every everyone's place, right? Right, right. And uh, but well, but that doesn't mean there wasn't some incidents. <laughs> so, so one of the first things that we did when we we went to work uh, was uh, we came back home and we saw one the t- toilet tissue stretched out all around down the hallway. <laughs> And then we went to the kitchen and saw the, you know, that little honey bear that we have tipped over and honey. Oh, like a little honey, like. Uh, uh, squirted out. Yeah. And then we ha- had left some cereal on the kitchen table. A cereal box. A cereal box, that you know, sweetened cereal. And she had taken that onto our bed and had <laughs> torn, kind of torn up the box, and there was cereal everywhere. Like Cheerios or something? No, it was like a, one of the sweeter, sweeter oh, okay. cereals. I can't even remember the brand. but I couldn't imagine, like, your bed covered in Cheerios. And <laughs> it's like sand, right? Like, good luck. Like, you're going to be fine in it for a week. Yeah. So, uh, but that only happened once. Really? And, okay. Yeah. And, well, we probably put away the cereal the next Oh, yeah. Time, you kind of right? you kind of learn, right? Um, right. Right. The the dogs the dogs train you on what they like to do, right? Yeah. And so you have to you have most a lot of the times you have to adapt to them. Probably, right? yeah. <laughs> so uh then uh you know, sometimes we'd go out to dinner and we might have a, a, like uh bring some food food home. Uh a doggy bag obviously. Like a doggy bag. Obviously no pun intended. Yeah, like a you know, piece of meat or something like that. Uh, maybe that mom brought from her uh, parents' house, and so the dog would enjoy the the steak. No, oh, who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, but what would happen was after she had that steak, she wouldn't eat for two or three days because because that dog food that she said, well, I don't want this. Yeah, stuff. I mean, I, I've I've heard that uh, people, you know, they kind of give give the dog some. Uh, leftovers and then the i think some people legitimately have that as a problem is the dog doesn't eat the dog food anymore yeah uh, no thanks i mean Mike, is... mikey and dewey they they eat it whatever <laughs> they don't care so uh. so but uh eventually uh, she would get hungry again and eat the the dog food that we would provide so i i completely forgot about this till just now uh was her birthday valentine's day or you you just it was roughly that time, so yeah. you you picked that day, right? Is yeah, that correct? So mom picked it. Yeah, mom picked. Because I remember, uh, you know, not trying to skip too far ahead, but uh, like being a kid, and we would make her like a, a cupcake or something, and yeah. give her a cupcake, you know, for her birthday. Um, so then you have her for a couple of years, and I guess Ian Ian, Ian was born, born. and. Um... Of course, every time you have a, a dog and then you bring a child into the into the picture, you worry about how that's going to be because there's there's might be some jealousy or something. Like it's that. still you know a young dog, right? Yeah. And obviously, a newborn baby needs a lot of attention. Yeah. Um. 
But uh, actually, it was Chewy, you know, being a female dog, somehow uh, had some maternal uh, instincts. And uh, I don't think the dog ever bothered the baby. And as Ian started to grow up and walk around and pull the dog's hair, uh, she, she was a very good sport about it. And she became like a mom's helper, you know, in, in our house. So that's good. Um, and then, uh, and so one thing that um, I remember about Chewy was that she was very obedient. Yeah, that's right. Uh, did did you guys do any extra training or just the, whatever the S- SPCA? I think SPCA had what, some... what, Did you guys do like additional like, training well, or I think, just whatever the basic I think, yeah i think and that was something that mom mom did i i didn't participate okay. in that um but so, like you know like like you said like not eating the cat's food like leaving it on the ground right and yeah. just a little capel like well not only that but our food we we didn't have to guard our food or make special arrangements uh you know to she she wouldn't touch our our food you know we could we could take a phone call and leave our sandwich on the table yeah. and she wouldn't she wouldn't touch it but before Ian was born there was an incident that in mom there's a couple incidents uh, that happened one it had to do with our, our garage door the garage door that we had uh, was the old fashioned kind that had a handle that it just that, re- that released it and so somehow, and and it was on a spring. So if you open the handle, it would it would kind of like just pop a, up like a, a little foot bit. or so. Yeah. Okay. So somehow, even though the the door was closed, she was jumping on the garage door uh, handle and was able to to one click it open and then two release the handle. So it pop popped in, and so. She started going on an adventure in in the neighborhood. In her neighborhood. Uh, fortunately, about a a block or so away, uh, we had there was a friend of the family, and who noticed that that our dog yeah, had gotten dog. out, and she walked the dog down to our house, and she saw that the garage door was slightly open. So she put put the dog in, dog in, and closed the door. <laughs> Close case. Uh, was this just like on a weekend or something? No, it was a work day. Oh, work. Oh, wow. So, jeez, oh, that's uh, lucked out there, right? Yeah, you know, because like, even if assuming she could find her way back, like you don't know, you know what? Yeah. You never know what happened. I mean, Who you knows? Know, somebody might have driven her to the East Bay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been looking for my dog. <laughs> Um, and I imagine this is before like microchips and all that too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There certainly, there was nothing um, like that. And did you walk the dog or with mom, or did mom mostly do it? No, I would walk the dog in the evening. In the evening, so so there. I I remember a story about um. You you've told me a couple times about like you guys going to like the ban- yeah. ATM. So one time, one time, mom and I took a a walk to the down to Irving Street, which is about a block and a half from. From where we lived, and we were gonna go to the ATM, and so Mom was doing some kind of a transaction, and I was standing there with Chewy, and suddenly there was these, there was these two cars there, and from, from, there was this person from each of the cars, coming, coming out of the car, coming out of the car towards the ATM, and this is at night. Yeah, it was at night, and so, uh, it, maybe it wasn't dark yet, but uh, it was it was the, certainly the evening. Just like a, a, a weekday? Weekday, yeah. And so suddenly, uh, Chewie sensed something was not right. And so she, was, she stood at attention and started barking at these people in kind of a menacing way. And so they saw that I was looking, and they saw that the dog was barking. And these guys looked, looked at each other, 
and they went and got back in the car and drove away. So the way we interpreted it is that the the dog protected us from a robbery right yeah. there on the um, street. Like they say, like a lot of animals can like sense fear, right? Yeah. And so that would make sense, you know, like you're, you're obviously, I'm not a criminal, so I have no idea how, what it feels like, but I would imagine, you know, you have some adrenaline, there's some, you know, some of that anxiety, you know, cause you, you have you're, you you know, like who knows what, if they had any sort of weapons, maybe, maybe they had like a knife or something, but you don't, you never know what's going to happen, right? If you start going towards someone aggressively, you don't know what that person, yeah. you, you, you have no idea what's going on. So I could, ima- I, I could definitely see that being plausible that they, that the, the dog, you know, picked up on that. And she wasn't really a barker, right? Would she bark at the male and all that or? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, actually she would. And so, uh, uh, bark at the doorbell. Well, uh, she would also tear up the mail. <laughs> so I had to build a box <laughs> so that the mail would fall in the box. In the box, yeah. And, uh. Uh, by the way, later on we got an automatic dar- garage door opener, so we we didn't have that same problem with the with the do- with the, the dog garage door yeah. opening up the garage door. So then you know Ian's born, and was this before Ian was born? The, the story with like the yeah, ATM, I think so. Yeah, yeah that, that I I don't remember the first time you told me that, but that made me uh, like proud of the dog. Yeah. You know, like that's a very commendable thing. You know, I think most people's dogs probably just. Not, and not that it's a bad thing, but they just don't do anything, right? Because they never have to. So, yeah. I mean, you never know what could have happened, right? Yeah. Especially, you know, like I said, there's probably like no, is the 80s, right? Yeah. No security cameras, probably. If it is, it's probably like really bad. There's You you have no idea what what could have happened. Yeah. So, I, I'm, I'm glad that she did that. Because um, like... Uh, Having a dog that's a few years older, I always like, you know, it's a full grown dog. It, you know, I guess she was getting kind of old by the time I could even like really remember anything about her. So it was kind of like put her on this pedestal for me, like that this is like, this is what a good dog is. Yeah. So then I I was born, me and, me and Dima were born. Yeah. And anything from that, just more well, of the same? Well, one thing I, uh, the dog was uh, Chewy had very good hearing, and so uh, when either uh, Mom or I would be driving home, and we'd be driving up to the house, even when the, we were like about half a block away, she would be able to recognize the sound of the car, and so she would immediately jump up and go to the front door before we even dropped drive in, drove into the driveway or parking yeah. in the front of the house she, she would know that one of us was coming home and and, and you figured this because you were on the other side right yeah. where you were home and you saw like the, the dogs all attentive and then you know a minute or two later here comes yeah. mom and you're like wait a minute yeah and yeah the, it was the, and every day every day yeah that's that's re- that's really cool uh, i i did not know that um so then, uh, you know, so just more or less of the same, right? You know, we have you have twins now, along with another young yeah, child. So, so we were living in San Francisco, and the, you know, the dog was a part of the life. Dog and cat was part of our uh, lives. I think that uh, again, there wasn't any jealousy. It was kind of like you know, a maternal instinct to care the. The, the twins play you know she she was uh you know part of the family and the twins were part of the family and uh, there were i don't think there was any negative incidences and uh in the evening i would be walking the dog and um yeah so it was just a you know nice family family life never any biting or anything like yeah, that yeah cuz i mean that's always a fear right you know you start sp- sp- Sticking your finger in the dog's mouth, or you know, you never know, right? Yeah. Like what the dog will do. Right. Um. So then, shortly after that, we moved. We moved down, you know, to the some suburbs of San Francisco. Yeah, that, that they call the peninsula. So, um, 
how did did the dog act any differently? Did was there anything? Well, so, well actually, suddenly she, she had a little more room. Yeah, so we have a bigger backyard, bigger yeah. house. She learned how to use the dog doors uh, with no problem. Uh, same for the cat, by the way. They they both now <laughs> had a slightly bigger uh, range. The weather was a little better, so that they could uh, spend a, a time outside. Now, one of the things in our yard was we had this uh, very old uh, rosemary bush. I guess that somebody planted for for herbs. And the rosemary bush was a little gnarly, and but she used to like to sit underneath and kind of rub the rosemary on herself. <laughs> so not only did she have soft fur, but now suddenly she would perfume herself. So she <laughs> I did not know that. that, yeah, that so, that's funny. So she smelled like rosemary and had a very nice uh, scent. Where, what happened to that plant? Did it just die? Or well, we or? tried to transplant it because it was kind of in the wrong spot. But uh, we wound up planting another rosemary. Uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. that that's a... Uh, <laughs> um, Cool. So an another thing that um that, that just made me think of um was that we had um kind of like there was like this small little corner with how like the uh cement was, like the paths, and she would like and there was like a grass or dirt area and she would lie right there in the sun. Do you remember that? Yeah, uh yeah. Kinda like where Mike lies now. But she would, you know, lie right there in the... It was nice and warm. Yeah, right in the afternoon, the sun beats down there. Well, you know, we in our yard, we have a lot of oak trees. Uh, yeah, that and, block. And that sun. block a lot of the sun. So there's there's just a few different angles during the day <laughs> where the sun warms up a certain area, which is actually nice. It was in the summertime, you know, it doesn't get overly hot in our in our in our yard. Because we have the trees, but still, it's nice to have a little sun. Yeah. So I guess we moved. We moved down here, and then mom wasn't work. She was working part time, right? Yeah. So then mom kind of started taking like walking the dog, right? I guess I don't know. Do she walking the dog with you? No. I I like never. I don't think I ever went on a walk. No, that was still me. Oh really? Yeah. Well, maybe she would. Well, I don't. I have no idea. I don't remember. I was yeah, too young. Yeah, I think. I think. I don't know if she was going on the walk. She, maybe she was. You know, during the day when you guys were in school. Okay. Yeah. But not when you guys were at home. Gotcha. Gotcha. So one one thing I also just remembered um, about Chewy is so I think we mentioned this in like the Dewey episode where, like clockwork, he knows it's five o'clock and he's hungry. Like we used to. So I'll, so basically what I'm getting at is, from what I remember, we used to eat dinner, you know, we'd do our, all our kind of stuff, then, I don't know, around nine or so, eight, whatever, you would do the dishes, and then you would feed the dog. Is that correct? That's kind of what well, I remember. The, the dog always had food. So, well, well, I mean, so, I know, but... So maybe we would, uh, at some point, we would give the, the dog... The, okay, she she wouldn't eat... All. She always had dry dog food. Okay, but the, you know, so, you the know, good she, stuff, she right? Would, the... She would... she would. Oh, that, you know, I remember she, that now. She would be able to... She, she only ate when she was hungry, so... Gotcha. So we would be able to, you know, leave dry dog, dry dog food out, and she wouldn't... That's right. Yeah, that that's yeah, that's I remember that. This is going along with the cat food is you'd you'd have, you know, the bowl of dry food and then she'd eat some of that throughout the day. And then, you know, she would get her like wet food. Yeah. But it's just it's just a stark comparison to uh like our our dogs now where it's like if there's something in that bowl, they're eating it. Yeah. Uh, no no matter how much, right? Yeah, those so, those dogs are crocodiles. <laughs> So, um, so good relationship with the cat. Um, so yeah. And then, so I guess I'll just kind of go in what I can remember. I don't, I guess the, one of the main things is, you know, I guess we just more or less did the same, same, right? We started growing up and I don't remember how old I was 
but eventually we got like guinea pigs as pets and you know of course more more of the same you know she's good with all the with she's yeah, good with she the cat she's good with the kids she was good with the the guinea pigs yeah um and one thing we would do you know they'd be in their little cages um but one thing we would do is we'd let them you know time to time let them run around and you know they have their little poop pellets uh-huh. and i remember Chewy would eat them. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know quite where that falls into the ma- maternal kind of uh, role, but I, I it, it's no it's clean up, uh, you know, yeah. in one, <laughs> one sense. But she, And I think she would lick them, right? I believe she did lick them too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were probably terrified, huh? Well, I, I don't know. They probably could sense, you know, whether it's... Maybe aggressive or not. Yeah. Now she was starting to get already a little older, and so um, my in-laws, uh, your mom's, uh, your grandparents, yeah, they they thought, oh, we'd like to get a dog. Like, well, because they they had a dog when they were growing. Yeah. And no, Boomer, right? Right. And he 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 died. Yeah. And then they then they, they moved, moved, and then they got they a, got a new dog, a new dog, and that. Uh, Sparky, Sparky, <laughs> Sparky, and um, it wasn't that long ago. And Sparky, actually, Sparky was a very attractive dog. Yeah, he was a like Australian Shepherd. I think he was mixed Mix, with something. Yeah. Um, he had good fur. He was probably he was a little bigger than Chewy. Probably like Mom said, Chewy was forty pounds, so he's probably maybe fifty pounds yeah. or so. And. Uh, as it turned out, uh, the they didn't they didn't like the dog. They didn't like him. No, because he didn't bark. Oh, like that when someone breed, uh, that breed doesn't bark. Oh, so so they wanted they, they wanted a dog that barked so that it would be barking at the crooks <laughs> that were coming. Yeah, to my get my them. my grandparents very very old school in that. So. Sense. They were just going to return them back, and so um, again, mom said, "No, if they she returns them, they're going to just put the dog to sleep." Because he was eight years old. He was eight at that time. Yeah. So. Um, so and that was like what ninety nine or two thousand or something like that around there. Yeah, probably. It was around then. And so, so she decided, okay, we'll we'll take them. So, something interesting happened because Chewie was already starting to really slow down, and because she would have been over ten. Yeah, she wasn't eating all that much, but suddenly now with Sparky there, so Sparky would get excited when it when there was uh, time for food. Yeah, he wouldn't bark, but he would jump up he and would, down. Yeah, up. yeah, he was, and so he would be happy when the food was coming. Uh, yet one thing he didn't do counter surfing. He that that's one thing he did. No, he do. he was actually the opposite. He was very on the floor. Yeah, I remember that. Um, so 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 he got got uh, Chewy kind of excited when it was dinner time uh, too, and so they kind of had a a pretty good re- relationship. But Chewy really had had was starting to slow down. So did did. Do you think Sparky kind of like energized her, like in a general, bit, yeah. like you know, like, yeah. hey, oh hey, there's this other dog, because you know the the cat was old too. Yeah. Um. You know how, how old that cat was when? It's like when, twenty. We, no, when we when it was time to put the cat down, she was twenty two. <laughs> I didn't. You know, I, yeah, I know this, this podcast isn't about dogs, but I I barely saw that cat. Um. So. Uh, yeah, and Chew, so Chewy, Chewy and Sparky, they never had any qualms or anything. There were no fights. You know, obviously Chewy was a good, was a very good dog. Sparky was just kind of, he was kind of um, lonely, right? Wasn't he? Well, he, 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 he wasn't completely well. Like one time we left, left uh, him overnight and he, he came and his, like his eyes were all, he he got completely distressed. Oh, okay. We left him over overnight, and so we couldn't leave him for too long. 
Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, so I guess just going back to, you know, focusing on Chewy was, um, my mom had a, a station wagon. Uh, what kind of car was it again? It was a, uh, a, um, Mercury. Mercury Sable. So that was one of those cars. It had, it had the two rows of seats and then had the like long trunk and it had the fold up seats that would face the other way. So right. it's facing towards another car. Um, but when we would like, you know, in the summer we would go to my grandparents' house a lot. And so we'd put the seats down and we'd have the dogs standing in the back. So I always enjoyed having, having the dogs, you know, you know, they'd be excited, you know, going on a ride. And I remember always like us three being in the back and I always wanted the dog to come up. Cause like if they were standing up, they'd be like at the top of where the headrest would be. So you, you know, you put your arm back, you could pet them. So I remember always, oh, you uh, was, and you were still in a car seat, right? No, oh. not, not at that point. Oh, well, well, I'm t- I'm thinking about when Sparky was there too. Oh, that's so right. yeah, I was. Yeah, you yeah you were already yeah in school and everything like that. Yeah, so I remember wanting you know wanting the dog to come up so I could pet it and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, that's a nice memory. So, is there any other um, any other like standout stories about Chewy? I mean, clearly she's a good, loving, she was obedient a good family dog who protected us who was very attentive to us, knew when we were coming in, coming home, and um, uh, it was good to, good to walk. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I used to have a pretty, pretty long walk with, with her. And those were, those were good, good days in the evening. Particularly it's, Spring and uh, summer here in uh, San Carlos is nice walking time. Cool. So I th- I think that's that's most of the the questions that I thought of. Um, I I just remember like always like this is this is what a you know obviously is my first dog that I had and it was older than me so that was always kind of weird like well, really Chewy was a quintessential family dog. Yeah, I mean I I wish. I like had more time with her where I could actually remember, you know, because like what realistically four or five is when I can really only remember. And it's, even then, you know, there's only a few things that I remember. Luckily, we have home videos. Um, I wish part of me wishes I wish I went through some of those just to, you know, you know, see the, you know, just the day to day behavior of the dog, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we had kids over. She was never had any problems. With yeah, her. never had any problems with any kids. kids. Yeah, yeah, it's a good. One. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I wish I had like more time, you know, because I'm a kid. I'm gonna like do whatever I want. I don't feel like I like neglected the dog or anything. But it's just like I just spent more time um, with the dog because like I remember you guys talking about how how good she was and just seeing like this dog. There's 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 nothing wrong with this dog. Like yeah. It's probably as good as a dog as you can get, and it, and you know, uh, I remember hoping we'd get that with Mikey. Mikey, <laughs> not not so much, you know, um, <laughs> that way. But you know, it's 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 nice to have like this is this is like a dog. I I want like you have like a, an image of like, and you know that this kind of dog can exist. Well, I think I think there's a big difference between a boy dog and a girl dog. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, we've had you know counting Sparky, Mikey, and Dewey. That's three three male dogs in a row. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it'd definitely be nice to have you know a female dog. Yeah. Well, there's no rush to get another dog. Well, yeah, <laughs> but you know, maybe I may get my own dog sometime. You know, yeah. but it's just something to think about. You know, like I walk the dog. You know, you got some, have to think about something, right? Yeah. You know, so yeah. What kind of dog? What, would what you kind like of dog you want? What kind well, of quality? A dog like a dog like Chewy would be a wonderful, wonderful dog to have. Yeah, I mean, I mom, mom said like, uh, did she, I don't remember if she said she was the perfect dog. I think she said she was the best dog I ever had. How many dogs do you have? Like five, long, six, long. growing up. Yeah. Well, uh, when you you know you combine a lab and a shepherd 
I think you're combining some great features, you know, protection of a, shep a German shepherd and a lab, which is a very uh, friendly, fam friendly, yeah. family oriented dog. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, and like you said, she's only 40 pounds, you know, thinking now Mike's like floating around 90. So it, it's, it's interesting to think that, you know, a, a dog like that size could even like, you know, command respect, right? You know, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm not a kid anymore too. So, you know, the dog's not bigger than me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I hope, I hope there's, I hope there's a, another, uh, Chewy out there. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's pe people who have their own Chewy, right? Or have had their own Chewy. Um, so hopefully, you know, I can get a Chewy, another Chewy someday. Yeah. You don't know a really funny thing. Um, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but when we were getting Dewey, I, I, I'm not a hundred percent on this and mom probably wouldn't remember but I'm pretty sure they said, yeah, his name was Chewy, but we named, we changed it to Dewey. Oh, is that right? I'm, yeah, I'm... Because like he, nine, mm, he really chews everything. Well, no, no, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I don't, I, I don't remember exactly. Like, I wish I, like, had written it down, you know, it's already a few years ago now. But it was something like that, like, yeah, like, I think it was just kind of, like, saying it in, like, an offhand way, like... I, I think more in terms of talking about like his obedience and knowing his name and his in, in regards to like his intelligence and that stuff. Um, yeah, like I couldn't imagine like knowing how that dog is now. And we, I, if his name was Chewy, we wouldn't have gotten him. <laughs> because <laughs> like like I mentioned in that episode I didn't want to get him uh, but we did anyway but like you know to have like a downgrade of the like, name you know like and we wouldn't we didn't know how he would turn out now he's not a bad dog but he's very goofy and interesting in his own ways but it's like I don't want to say the complete opposite cuz you know he's not bad but it's so different having like this ideal like basically perfect dog and then you have this yeah. crazy wacko dog yeah. who, so who needs you know like you said she was independent who needs all this attention um so yeah i'm really glad that i had um chewy growing up uh i, I want i want to look through some pictures and maybe some of the old videos um to you know see see more of her because great dog and like it, it 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 made me i think like she's part of the reason why like i wanted to do like a show like this is just because like there's cool dogs that you know and of course there's the cool dogs that you know that that or do stuff for the military or police or firefighters but you know there's cool dogs that just have you know an important and profound impact for just a regular person, you know. A mom at home dog. Yeah, and just, you know, make make you feel safe. Yeah. Um so I guess that that basically wraps up this episode. Um so I don't know if you've ever listened to a podcast, but a lot of times they like try to um they call them plugs, right? I'm sure you're familiar with that term or, or just promote something. So yeah. um is there anything you want to promote just like and it can just be advice or like, you know, be kind or something like that. It doesn't have to be like a personal thing that you do. Well, I, I would say this, that, you know, every time it's time to get a get a, a new dog, I'm always saying, hey, don't rush into this. You know, there's no, you know, we don't have to hurry and get another dog. But once you have the dog, it's easy to give your heart to the dog they they yeah. truly are um uh, magnificent creatures and they really do uh feel part of the family yeah so um so yeah for me uh you can follow me my personal twitter at at ilio alexif just my name and then i have the the good boy podcast twitter account facebook 
uh, Instagram, all at at the Good Boy Pod. There's the YouTube page, the Good Boy Pod. Um, this should be available on all podcast services, iTunes, uh, Google Play, SoundCloud. Um, I was I've been told that it takes some time. Or I'm not told. I've been read that it takes some time to get on Spotify and Stitcher. So it should pop up on there. And then it's on Libsyn. Just, I think it's the goodboypod.libsyn.com. Um, so plenty of ways to listen to it. If you do listen to it, please uh, share it with someone. Maybe, maybe your mom or your dad needs a podcast while they commute tell it to them tell them to listen to it uh tell your aunt i don't know tell someone uh please rate it and leave feedback um i want to post pictures of all the dogs on the different platforms around when each episode uh comes out so everyone can actually see what the dog looked like the aim is to paint a picture of what the dog was but obviously we can show you a picture of what it actually looked like. So um, thanks for listening and keep petting those dogs.